Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome to Dixie Storytime World. Let's listen to the magic ball of wool. The story goes that one night in the forest near dawn, a large ball of wool appeared floating in the air. Light as a balloon, the ball of wool floated through the hedgehog's window. It was so quiet that when it got stuck on his prickles, the little creature didn't even stir. At sunrise, the spider on the doorknob, who woke up very early so that she could get her web ready, saw the mysterious ball of wool stuck on the hedgehog's back. Her friend was still snoring away merrily. "Wake up, hedgehog!" shouted the spider in a frightened voice. "Oh, what's up?" asked the hedgehog, curling himself into a ball. "You've got a great big ball of wool stuck on your prickles. Can't you feel it?" The hedgehog, who was quite used to shaking things out of his prickles, turned around in his bed, and the ball of wool fell off. He looked at it with surprise and said, "What could I do with this ball of wool?" Well, wool is for knitting scarves, mittens, and sweaters," answered the spider from her web. "If you like, I can teach you." The hedgehog plucked out his two longest prickles to use as knitting needles, and the spider, who was an expert, taught him how to knit. Soon, all of the forest animals heard about the mysterious arrival of the ball of wool, and so, one by one, and full of curiosity, they came to see what was happening in the hedgehog's house. The first creature who came along was the mouse. Seeing the hedgehog enthusiastically knitting away, he said, "Good morning, hedgehog. I came to see you and your ball of wool. Could you knit something for me?" "Of course I could, little mouse. I'll knit you a sweater." Clickety click, clickety click. A stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a tiny sweater, but just as he finished, something magical happened. The woolen sweater turned into a great big ball of cheese. The mouse was overjoyed. He loved cheese more than anything else in the world. His next visitor was the frog. Clickety click, clickety click. A stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted some fancy mittens for the frog, but just as he finished, something amazing happened. The woolen mittens turned into a gleaming mirror. The frog was delighted, as she was very vain. She'd always dreamed of having a mirror in which she could look at herself all day long. His next visitor was the bear. Clickety click, clickety click. A stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a great big balaclava, complete with a hole for his friend Snout. But the cat turned into a shell, in which the bear could hear the sea. Then along came the centipede. Clickety click, clickety click. A stitch here, a stitch there. This time, the hedgehog patiently knitted one hundred socks, which turned into one hundred pairs of brightly coloured castanets that entertained the centipede for hours. Then along came the snail. Clickety click, clickety click. A stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a scarf that covered the snail's shell, but it turned into a tiny scooter. That could take him wherever he was going, much faster than he'd ever dreamed possible. And so, all of the animals in the forest got whatever they wanted most in the world from the hedgehog, and his magic ball of wool. One afternoon, a crab knocked on the hedgehog's door. He'd hiked through three forests and climbed two mountains to find him. Oh, hello, hedgehog! They say you've got a ball of wool and can knit things. I've come a long, long way to ask you for a strong, long rope," said the crab. Exhausted after his journey, has something happened? Asked the hedgehog, concerned by the crab's visit. A huge blue whale has got stuck on the beach. Explained the worried crab. He weighs more than two hundred tons, and we can't move him. If he doesn't get back in the water soon, the hedgehog ran off to get his two knitting prickles and the ball of wool. But all he found was a tiny piece, no longer than an ant. The magic ball of wool had run out. The crab returned to the beach with empty claws. The hedgehog was so upset he couldn't sleep at all. He just kept thinking about the poor blue whale who'd got stuck on the beach. News travelled fast in the forest. It was carried on the wind and with the birds and the bees. And in the same way the animals had found out about the arrival of the ball of wool, they immediately heard the sad story of the whale. So that night, one by one. They left the things they loved most of all outside the hedgehog's door: a big ball of cheese, now slightly nibbled, a shiny mirror, 
a hundred pairs of brightly coloured castanets, a shell in which the sea crashed, and an itty bitty scooter. In the morning, the hedgehog saw that all of the wishes had been returned, and he understood what he had to do. The forest animals had given up their presents to help save the blue whale. All he had to do was pull the thread from each of them, and he would have the whole ball of wool once again. With the ball of wool stuck on his back, the hedgehog hiked through three forests and climbed two mountains until he came to the sea and found the blue whale sobbing on the sand. Clickety click, clickety click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a long, strong rope. But just as he finished, something amazing and magical happened. The woolen rope turned into a gigantic butterfly. The beautiful butterfly's flapping wings surrounded the hedgehog and the marine animals in a sea breeze full of hope. It opened its wide wings, wrapped them around the blue whale, and returned it to the salty water. Each and every one of the creatures on the beach, in the water, and in the air, who saw this amazing sight, joined the forest animals in discovering that the ball of wool was truly magical. They say that late one night, close to dawn, an enormous magical ball of wool that had turned into a butterfly flew through the sky in the forest. Where it went is another mystery. The end. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.